So some things were better. Some things were as I would have had them made. It was really difficult, but I guess it's the thing about when I was pregnant, I, I didn't have a choice, but I think actually in the long run, it served me well. <laughs> thank you so much for coming to the studio thank you for having me we're going to talk about your company bespoke Vinny. Mm -hmm. but first of all right how does somebody go from being a cbt therapist to becoming as you refer to yourself as an accident entrepreneur well, i think that's the best way to describe it completely yeah. by accident so i actually learned to sew in the evening after work to alter my own clothes because i'm four foot eleven and everything is always too long. So I'm gonna learn how to do this. I'm gonna stop going to the dry cleaners. Spending a fortune in the dry cleaners. Absolutely. Um, mm. So that's where it started really, that I wanted to learn how to sew. I'd never sewn before that. Bought myself a little sewing machine. Um, and then I started making things for the home as well, because I love grand designs. And I love kind of any, anything to do with homeware and practical yeah. use of African prints, which is what I make my products out of. And then- um, Nice and colorful. Yes, yeah. exactly. And so it just kind of, grew from there really. Lots of people also started asking me where I got my things from and um, I went to some craft fairs to try and see if anyone would be interested and it's just kind of grown really. So, so the first time someone uh, saw what you made was, was cushions was it? Yeah. And, and you were also saying it was a, a wallet? An oyster card holder. An oyster card holder. Yeah. Okay. So, so when did the or sorry, idea grow from there? Was it like the cushions that you went? I, I can do something here. Like you said you went to a trade fair. What, do, what did you take? Did you take cushions? I took the cushions and the worst card holders. That was literally the only two products okay. I had at the time. And how did you get on? Really well. Really, right. really well. I was quite shocked, actually. I thought people wouldn't really be interested, but it did really well. So where has it gone from there to where you are now? Um, it's gone, so I sell on Etsy. Um, and Etsy picked me up and did a feature on me there. Um, and it's just, yeah, so it's, I sell on my own website as well. So after that, I kind of started my own website. And um, yeah, it's gone really well from there. You, you manufactured everything because we had somebody else on the show before who I think was Hannah. She was saying that she like does everything when it comes to the company. Like she, she manufactures the clothes. She looks after the invoicing, the marketing, the sales, you name it. She's looking after everything. Mm -hmm. So, but majority of her time is being taken up by the manufacturing, right? You started off doing everything. I did, yeah. And then you, 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 you got pregnant. I did. And, and you were worried that the manufacturing was going to come to a bit of a standstill because obviously you're going to you're going to have a baby and you couldn't be doing that while you were pregnant. What did you do from there? Because it's not easy making everything yourself and you've got your own standard. You know, you're putting the love into it. And now you're passing that over to someone else to look after for you. How do you define someone to take that over? Or how do you find a company to take that over for you? Uh, so I, it was really difficult for me because I'm a complete control freak. Um, okay. But I knew that it was going to get to a stage where I just couldn't do it anymore. And the house was just being overridden by all my stuff as well. So I, I just started looking for uh, clothing manufacturers in the UK. It was really important to me that it, it, it was in the, in the UK. UK. Yeah. Okay. Um, and somewhere, somewhere that I could commute to and actually go and have a conversation with. So luckily not too far from where i live there's actually a um a village of manufacturers that do manufacture clothing and things that are still made in the uk so i went down there where is that uh it's called florentina clothing village okay it's in tottenham north london uh, so i went down there i went and spoke to lots of different manufacturers and i showed them all my items and got samples made and then i picked someone from there did you have a look outside the uk at all i know you wanted to keep it in here but did you have a look outside I did. I'm, I'm just asking for like price <laughs> comparison. It is cheaper to manufacture outside the UK, but it was really, really important to me to stay here. So I did have a look, but I, I just, I didn't, and because it was the first time I was doing it as well, I just really didn't feel like I could do that. Yeah. And do you, how, how easy was it for you to give control? Because I said, you're a control freak, <laughs> you'd be making everything yourself, and like passing it over now, was the, sta was the standard better? You know, um, like, some these things, guys are professionals. Yeah, some things were better, I can't even lie. <laughs> so some things were better, some things were as I would have had them made. It was really difficult, but I guess it's the thing about when I was pregnant, I, I didn't have a choice, but I think actually in the long run it served me well, because now it means that it has freed me up to do other things yeah. in a way that I couldn't do before, and I, I wasn't really ready to let go until I had to. If you hadn't got pregnant, do you think you'd still be manufacturing a lot of the stuff? Probably, though I think my husband might have something to say about that. <laughs> well, well, cause it's a good thing as well, because it kind of pushed you into it yeah. sooner than you probably would have done. But this, this is something that, that I had spoken to, to Hannah about, that it, it's freed up so much of your time, Absolutely. you know, that you can put into building the business. So how has the business changed now that the manufacturing is looked after? You're looking after everything else. How has it changed? How has it grown? 
Uh, it means that I can focus on marketing. It means that I can think about designing new products. I think I was so overwhelmed by all the things that, you know, I'd get an order, I'd be really happy I got an order, and I'd think, oh gosh, when am I gonna find time to make this? So it's just yeah. taken all of that away. So I still make my lampshades, but I don't make anything else now. I'm not ready to give up the lampshades no, just yet. I'm not ready to give up the lampshades. <laughs> No, at the moment, I don't believe anyone can make them better than me. I, I might be told wrong later. But you need for to now. sell them for more than. <laughs> I do. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's really freed me up to I think be a bit more strategic. Okay. Um, and just think about gaps that are missing. Maybe you know, things like how can I make the website work better? How can I think about other products that are going to serve customers better in a way that I just wasn't able to? I didn't have the headspace for it before. Is everything selling on the website? Like, are you selling it elsewhere as well, selling in markets? Um, so I go to a few markets a year, much less okay. now that I've got a little one, that's a bit more tricky to do. So yep. I go to maybe three to five a year maybe, um, and I'm trying to push the online. Majority of us online. Yeah. So how, how are you getting your, your audience to your website? Like what's working for you? Um, Instagram works pretty well. Um, so I think most of my customers that buy on my website yeah. come from Instagram. Because um, obviously everything's so colourful, so like it, it's perfect for Instagram. Oh, thank you, yeah, I guess because it's quite a visual platform. Yeah. And um, then Etsy's really good for people who maybe don't know about you and maybe just would be looking for a cushion, an apron, for example, and they're putting that into the search and then you'll pop yeah. up. So it's quite good for finding, Etsy's quite good for finding new customers who wouldn't have otherwise come across you. It, it's difficult enough as it is to, to, to get followers on Instagram for your personal account, mm -hmm. right? Never mind for a, a business or a brand. You've got a, a, over 33,000 followers on Instagram. How did you get those? Like, how did you build your audience? Uh, in the beginning, I spent a lot of time going and engaging with people who looked like they liked African print or were into homeware um, and would actually go and like speak to people and follow pages and, and build connections with people yeah. that way. Um, I have done some paid adverts as well. Um, some paid adverts? Yeah. Okay, how do they work out? Um, and roughly, what would you have spent? Gosh, in total or on Just each? Just per, per campaign. Per campaign. Um, so I do boost some of my posts, which may be about 30, 40 pounds. Um, there's one page called The Shade Room. We talked about that off camera, yeah. Yeah, that I advertised on, so that was 2,000 pounds. 2,000, okay. They've got a reach of, I think, about 16 million Wow, people. okay. So it's worth, it's worth the money. Yeah, I thought yeah. it was. It well, was it's worth the money as long as you get something out of it. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> definitely. Yeah, so that was, that was an experiment someone wanted to do for ages, and I thought, you know, I'm going to just do it. And so see so what, what did you do with that exactly? Like, you, you got the chance to, to put up a, uh, a tagline, and you put up a picture. What did you put a picture of? Um, so it was a picture of me and just a little bit about the background behind my brand. Okay, so it wasn't actually, this is my pillow by my pillow. No. It was just <laughs> explaining what your company was. Uh, yeah, my company was and how I kind of the story of how I got started. And right. Like, yeah. So what were you looking for out of there? You're looking for followers? Were you looking for people to come and convert over to sales? I know eventually that's what you want anyway, but, but out of that one ad, what, what were you trying to get? I think I was trying to connect with people who might relate to my story. Right. So, uh, you know, as I told you before, I'm a CBT therapist, so this idea of accidental entrepreneur and all the things that I had to juggle while still running my business and just hoping to connect with people who might relate to that story. Okay, okay. And as an accidental entrepreneur, as you keep calling yourself, <laughs> sorry for calling you that as well, <laughs> yes, right. do you find that there, there's a lot out there or a little out there to help you? Because you didn't do a business course, I take it, before no, you got into so, it. So you're learning as you go. Absolutely. So, so w what is helping you? Like, what, what could there be more help of out there? Oh, that's a very good question. Um, so Etsy has a blog right. called Etsy Success Blog. Um, and then I went to go and find other things that were similar to it. So they literally talk you through how to take your own photos, how to write copy for each of your products, okay. um, how to find your target audience, how to set your prices. So I think anything out Is that there, in general or on Instagram or? Um, in general, in general, in general, but I think there's any resources like that. I think can be really, really helpful if you yeah. have just no idea where to start, really. Natalie, thank you so much for coming into the studio. You're not an accidental entrepreneur. <laughs> You're an entrepreneur. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you.